In this video, we will discuss breast cancer screening and imaging basics. We will begin with a case study of a 45-year-old premenopausal Caucasian woman who initially presented for breast cancer screening. She has never had a breast biopsy before, but her sister was diagnosed with breast cancer in her early 40s. She started menses at the age of 12, has been pregnant once, and delivered a full-term birth at the age of 38. She has never used hormone replacement therapy or oral contraceptives. Her social history is negative for smoking or drinking. Physical exam was negative for masses, breast tenderness, nipple retraction or dimpling. There was also no nipple discharge or bleeding and no axillary or supraclavicular lymphadenopathy. Mammography is the primary modality for breast cancer screening in average risk women. Although a significant number of breast cancer diagnoses are brought to attention by the patient, most breast cancers in the United States are diagnosed due to an abnormal screening study. Data suggests that screening mammography both reduces the odds of dying of breast cancer and facilitates the use of early treatment. The United States Preventive Services Task Force recommends biennial screening starting at age 50 to 74 with individualized screening for women aged 40 to 49 years of age. On the other hand, both the National Comprehensive Cancer Network and the American Society of Breast Surgeons recommend yearly screening for average-risk women starting at the age of 40. On the right-hand side, we have our patient screening mammograms. We evaluate them in a conventional radiographic manner, that is, the right breast on the left and the left breast on the right. These images represent the two classic mammographic views. On the top, we have the medial lateral oblique view, and below we can see the cranial caudal views. When available, a digital breast tomosynthesis will be performed alongside a screening mammogram. Early data shows that continued implementation of digital breast tomosynthesis is associated with improvements in screening outcomes, including increased cancer detection rates and improved specificity across all breast densities. To the right is our patient's digital breast tomosynthesis at screening. Breast imaging is given a category based on the standardized breast imaging reporting and data system, also known as the BIRAD system. A BIRAD zero is assigned to breast imaging that is incomplete and thus needs additional imaging for evaluation. A BIRADs one and two are assigned to negative imaging or benign lesions respectively and thus we recommend resuming routine screening. A BIRADS 3 is assigned to breast lesions that are probably benign. Having a likelihood of cancer of 2% or less, we recommend a short interval follow-up. BIRADS 4 lesions can vary in their likelihood of cancer, which can range from greater than 2% to less than 95%. In these cases, we recommend a tissue diagnosis. A BIRADS 5 category is assigned to lesions that are highly suggestive of malignancy. Therefore, a tissue diagnosis is strongly recommended. Lastly, a BIRADS 6 category is assigned to biopsy-proven malignant lesions. Our patient's screening mammogram was notable for microcalcifications found in her left breast. Her mammogram was assigned a BIRADS category 0, and therefore she was recalled for additional imaging. Diagnostic imaging, such as diagnostic mammography, is performed in women or men who present with breast complaints or have an abnormal clinical examination, and in women who have abnormal screening mammography. Patients with specific breast symptoms, such as a palpable lump, nipple discharge, or focal pain, should undergo diagnostic mammography. In contrast to screening imaging, diagnostic imaging is always supervised by a radiologist and can include additional views, such as compression and magnification views. Here, our patient's diagnostic mammogram better characterizes the calcifications found on screening mammogram, Clustered pleomorphic calcifications measuring 5.3 millimeters. It was given a BIRADS category of 4. In contrast, screening mammography is performed on asymptomatic women and only two views are obtained, which are later reviewed by a radiologist within days to weeks. In contrast to mammography, breast ultrasounds are not used in the routine screening for breast cancer, but instead for diagnostic follow-up of an abnormality seen on screening mammography in order to clarify the features of a potential lesion, such as solid or cystic. On the other hand, MRI can be used for screening of breast cancer in a specific population. Women who are at high risk, that is approximately 20-25% to or greater risk, of developing breast cancer. 
Some examples of this patient population include women with known BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene mutations, those with first-degree relatives with BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene mutations but have not had genetic testing themselves, patients who have undergone radiation therapy to the chest between the ages of 10 and 30, and those with Lieferman syndrome or Cowden syndrome or who have a first-degree relative with one of these syndromes. In contrast, the indications for diagnostic MRI are typically for known breast cancers, to evaluate the extent of disease that cannot be determined by mammography or ultrasound, or for re-evaluation after undergoing neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Let's go back to our case. What's next? Recall that our patient's lesion was given a BioRats 4 category, which means it is suspicious for malignancy and therefore a tissue diagnosis is recommended. Core needle biopsy is the preferred initial biopsy procedure as it is minimally invasive and still likely to acquire sufficient tissue to adequately sample the intended target. A core needle biopsy can be performed under image guidance with either ultrasound, x-ray, that is stereotactic, or with MRI with and without IV contrast. Ultrasound guidance is typically preferred if the target lesion is well visualized with this modality. Stereotactic biopsy is performed for mammographic abnormalities without a clear ultrasound correlate. MRI-guided biopsy is available at some sites for lesions not seen with the other two modalities. Fine needle aspiration can be an option in the evaluation of nodal disease, but it is not recommended for biopsies of the breast parenchyma. Furthermore, a core needle biopsy is still the preferred biopsy procedure for lymph node evaluation. Excisional biopsies are not used as the initial biopsy method unless percutaneous needle biopsy is not feasible or available, but it may be required to further investigate discordant or inconclusive results of percutaneous biopsies. In summary, our patient is a 45-year-old premenopausal Caucasian woman who was diagnosed with ductal carcinoma in situ, initially detected by screening mammogram. This is classified as a clinical stage zero. This concludes our talk. Thank you.